Good afternoon. This is Josh at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation of Trade Like an Expert, How to Quickly Find Candidates for Swing Trading. Joining us tonight is Mark Chaken, founder and CEO of Chaken Analytics, and Dan Russo, a chartered market technician and chief market strategist for Chaken Analytics. Chaken Analytics is not registered as a broker-dealer or investment advisor, either with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission or with any state securities regulatory authority. Chaken Analytics is for educational purposes only and is not a trade advisory service. Past results of any trading system or methodology do not guarantee future results. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to all registrants. Please submit your questions via the Zoom Q&A window, which you can access in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Before we get started, we have Barry Burns, the founder of Top Dog Trading with us. Barry, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Jason. I appreciate that. And I'm very, very excited to be here with Mark and with Dan. Um, I invite a lot of people here, so I know a lot of my students and subscri subscribers are here with us today. And as you know, I don't normally get on and introduce uh, speakers that I invite to speak to our community, but today I really wanted to do that because, well, to me, this is a, uh, a very special and significant uh, event. Mark is one of the legends, living legends of trading. We all know about the historic legends, and wouldn't it be great if you could go back in history and speak to some of those historic legends of trading who have now unfortunately passed on. So, but Mark is one of the very, 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 very few living legends. And so you have an opportunity seriously to hear from Mark. Um, he's been a Wall Street trader for 40 years, stockbroker analyst, options trader. He founded Chicken Analytics LLC to deliver stock, um, analytics to investors and traders based on a very powerful tool called the Chaken Power Gauge. Very sophisticated. I mean, this is not um, something that you're going to, you know, find for free on the internet or it's not some basic tool. This, this is the real deal. This is, we're talking professional grade here, a 20 factor alpha model proven effective at identifying a stock's potential. So it, it is used by um, portfolio managers, stock traders. In fact, now it's so good that it's even part of the Thomas Reuters Institutional Workstation. So that alone says a lot. It's, um, it's just incredible. I cannot say enough. And by the way, when I say that Mark is a, leg a living legend, you know, if you go through your um, list of indicators on your charting platform, there's very few indicators on there that have a human being's name listed as part of the name of the indicator. A, I can count maybe two. <laughs> there might be more. But I can think of two. And Mark Chaikin is one of them. And that is how well-respected he is. That's how well-known he is. Again, used by professional traders around the world, um, institutional workstations. So uh, listen, take this very, very seriously. Take notes absorb everything that you can from this man. This is a very, very rare and auspicious opportunity that you have today. That's why I wanted to come on and personally uh, introduce, and not only introduce, but give my own personal, high personal recommendation. In fact, I will say my highest personal recommendation. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mark. And Mark, thank you very much for being here and um, for being willing to share your knowledge, your wisdom, and your four decades of experience with our students and subscribers today. Really, really appreciate it. It's an honor. Uh, Barry, thank you for the very kind words and for turning out so much of the top dog uh, trading community. Uh, today, we're going to talk about finding profitable swing trading candidates. And that's particularly appropriate given the volatility we're having in the market. And I'm very pleased to have my colleague, Dan Russo, our chief market strategist who joined Chaken Analytics about three months ago. Uh, Dan's going to share a little bit of his background, very relevant to what we're going to be talking about today. For those who uh, want a little more color, although Barry's really done a great job of this, 50 years on Wall Street. For 45 years, I've been using technical analysis, but always in conjunction with fundamentals. That's what this webinar is going to be all about, how there's a 
powerful but simple way for you to incorporate fundamentals into your trading because they really make a difference. Along the way, I've headed up brokerage department at a regional brokerage firm, uh, options department rather, called Tucker Anthony, um, 250 brokers, tens of thousands of options clients. We'll give you a little bit of flavor of the option strategies that you can create uh, as a complement to swing trading in stocks. But I think the key point here is that Along the way, I've been mentored by some of the smartest and most successful institutional investors. When Dan Russo uh, comes on in a minute, he's going to talk about how he interacted with institutional investors. Well, my interaction was with clients when we had an institutional brokerage firm and also with colleagues at various firms that I was with. The reason that's important is that nine years ago, after the financial collapse of 08, when I decided to really round out my life's work, go way beyond technical analysis, which I was known for, uh, and create the Chaikin Power Gate trading, I drew on everything I had learned from these very successful portfolio managers, traders, and hedge funds. And that's what we call the Chaikin Power Gate trading. Now, just a little bit of an aside, uh, Barry was very kind to talk about how the name is on the indicator. I did that because um, my uh, sons, one of whom is in our business now, were probably eight and nine years old. And I was working till four in the morning on the first Apple computer developing the Chaikin oscillator, which became the Chaikin money flow. And I figured they're going to think I'm nuts if I, and so I put my name on it so that if it's stuck, they could look back and say, that's what he was doing at four in the morning. So that's really how it came to be known as the Chaikin money flow. Um, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dan Russo. Dan is the real deal. He authors our daily morning insights. I write a weekly market letter called Shake and Market Insights that comes along with our membership. Dan has the tough job. Talking about the market every day is not easy and being right most of the time is not easy. So Dan, why don't you give people a little bit of your background? Sure, thank you, Mark. And thanks everybody for joining us today. So. I've been on Wall Street for, for 18 years. I started my career uh, as a summer intern on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange and uh, you know, worked at various different roles uh, throughout the industry since then. I am a chartered market technician. You can kind of think of that as uh, to technical analysis, what the CFA is, to fundamental analysis. Prior to joining Chaikin Analytics, I spent 10 years covering institutional investors from a sell-side sales and trading desk. So. When Mark talks about uh, fundamental, fundamental research and fundamental analysis, I had an entire research department who was um, analyzing companies and sectors and industries, and it was my job to kind of get ideas, trading ideas, investment ideas in front of hedge funds, mutual funds, pension funds, some of the largest institutional investors in the world, really. Uh, prior to that, I was a member and what was then called a specialist on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, where I was responsible for making markets and utilizing my firm's capital to, to trade and maintain fair and orderly markets. And as I've gotten more and more involved in the, in the research process, uh, my work has kind of caught on with some in the financial media. So I'm a frequent guest on Bloomberg TV as well as other financial media. And as Mark said, I joined, uh, joined his team about three months ago and it's just been, it's been an amazing process so far. And Dan's going to share with us some of his uh, recent recommendations and walk you through his thought process every morning when he finds his bullish or bearish stock of the day. So in today's webinar, we're going to cover five keys to successful swing trading. I'm going to show you how to find bullish and bearish candidates that are likely to be successful with a high degree of probability using the Chaikin Power Gauge rating to assess the fundamentals and a proprietary relative strength indicator. It's very visual, not a lot of numbers, to find the best stocks to trade from the long and the short side. I'm going to show you how to use Chaikin Money Flow. And how many of you are familiar with Chaikin Money Flow? If you are, can you type a big CMF into the chat box? And um, Josh, as you always do, give me a little bit of a, uh, an update on how many people are familiar with Chaikin Money Flow. Sure, we'll do. If everybody could use the Q&A window to, to type that in, please. Uh, I said the chat box. Sorry about that. You know what? So, we got some smart and trepid people. They already figured it out. They're rolling in. There you go. So Chaik and Money Flow has been well documented on sites like StockCharts.com, all your online brokerage platforms. going to show you a very specific way to use 
uptake in money flow to anticipate future price movement, not just to confirm it. Going to show you rules-based exits and entries, really the key to successful swing trading. And then spend a little time focusing on how to play good defense, avoiding the landmines that can destroy your trading results or your IRA. And most importantly, because this is going to be Dan's moment to um, share with you what he does every day, how to profit from volatility by swing trading. So uh, I want to start out by looking at the market because it's been volatile. It's also been discouraging for people. People are getting tired of a market that peaked in January and is basically in a trading range after the initial uh, thrust down and a retest. So what really has happened here is that 2017 was a pretty easy year if you believed in an earnings-driven bull market. We were in an uptrend on autopilot, and we'll see that very clearly in a minute. And then in January, late January, early February, we um, segued to a roller coaster of a correction. And we define a correction as more than 10% decline in the S&P 500, but less than 20% because that's a bear market. So let's start out by looking at a one-year chart of the SPY, which mirrors the S&P 500 index. Uh, we use the S&P 500 for all our relative calculations and to figure out where big money is either going or coming out of the market. And so this is a one-year chart of the SPY. It's the most actively traded instrument in the U.S. markets. And we look at it from two perspectives. What's the trend of prices at the top? So we've drawn that bottom trend line that goes back to the July low in 2017. And then it was a parallel line, but we broke out sharply in late December and then went parabolic in January. And when you get a parabolic move, you know it's going to correct. The problem is you don't know when. Jamie Dimon, who's the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, probably one of the smartest business executives on Wall Street, was quoted yesterday is saying, yeah, there's going to be a recession. I can guarantee it 100%. I just don't know when. Same thing with a correction off a parabolic move. So we got that correction starting from a peak on January 26th. And it picked up steam because of a blow up in an exchange traded note that didn't really affect you and me, but it's sure affected the market because there were a lot of margin calls and Dan can speak uh, maybe in the next slide to what margin calls do because he saw them on the floor of the exchange. The bottom line is we've held the lows, but something has changed. All through the rally in 2017, check and money flow, which normally oscillates around a zero line, so it goes from red to green, or it goes from accumulation to distribution, was strong, even on the pullbacks. Very narrow negative money flow. What did that mean? It meant that Institutional investors were piling into the SPY to get exposure to U.S. large cap equities. Let's say they sold 5 million shares of IBM or Facebook or they were getting out of Apple, but they wanted to stay fully invested. What do they do? They buy the SPY until they can figure out what stock they want to own to replace what they've just sold. And money came in off the sidelines in January over $65 billion. Well, it came in at the wrong time. And now, as we'll see on the next slide, but before we get there, check and money flow is weak. That's part of the reason that the market's having a hard time getting going on the upside. When check and money flow is weak, it's telling you that there's a pattern of selling into the close, into the four o'clock close on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, because check and money flow measures that very well. Strong markets, tend to close high up in their range. Weak markets, the sellers come in, they're afraid of what might happen overnight. So with that, I'm gonna let Dan Russo give you a sense of what the shorter term picture in the market is. Yeah, thanks Mark. So here's here's something that I provide every day for uh, those who read my my newsletter to uh, Chicken Analytics subscribers. It's basically a short term, short term view of the S&P 500 and you can really see the consolidation that Mark's been talking about. It's my view that uh, the consolidation is happening within the context of a secular uptrend. We have support at the rising 200-day moving average, and that really is my, my key measure of trend. And you can see the downward sloping trend line. That's resistance from the January highs. Additionally, I look at momentum. 
I use an RSI uh, as a momentum indicator to confirm what's happening in price, not vice versa. And you can see at the bottom of the screen, the RSI is right in the middle of the range around 52. Uh, so that does confirm the sideways trend in price that we are seeing in the broader market. And just to kind of follow up on Mark was saying about money flow, you know, there's an old kind of rule of thumb that, you know, smart money trades on the close and dumb money trades on the open. So the fact that Mark built that indicator to capture what institutional investors are doing is really, is really telling. And, you know, the fact that institutional investors are still, you know, kind of lowering their equity exposure uh, is the reason that we continue to be stuck in this range. And, um, you know, right now we're just kind of waiting for a catalyst to break us out one way or the other. And, We'll let price dictate, but you know it's pretty clear here. Uh, we are we're stuck in the range, and you know there definitely are opportunities to trade within the trading range. But you know from a bigger picture, the range is uh, the consolidation is in place, and my view is that it's in the context of a secular uptrend. Well, that's very helpful because in order to swing trade, uh, you want to be nimble and trade from both the long and the short side, and also know that when you're in a consolidation like this, you don't have to reach for stocks. You can let them come to you. What I like about this chart is it's very crisp, and it illustrates the W-shaped bottom that has formed. Now, uh, as we'll see on the next chart, declines of more than 10%, which we call corrections, almost always end in the shape of the letter W. You make a, a low, typically it's a panic low on heavy volume. You, oops, sensitive mouse, you rally up. In this case, we had two thrusts up. And then you come back down and test the low. Sometimes you break it. Sometimes you do what we did here, which was test the low. We haven't been able to break out yet to the upside. We think we will, but let's take a look at a five-year chart of the S&P to put all this in perspective. Where we've uh, put the letter V up, you had corrections of less than 10%, between five and 10%. And they all ended in the letter V. This chart's five years of the S&P. That's why you heard people on CNBC saying, buy the dips. Then in 2015 in the fall and 2016 in February, we had bigger corrections, again, more than 10%. And they both ended in the shape of the letter W. Unusual to have two W-shaped bottoms within a six-month period, but we did. Then we started rallying. We broke out here in 2016. And we had one more V-shaped bottom. And guess what's missing in this period from that V-shaped bottom to the peak in January? Because that encompasses all of 2017. No Vs. The reason being, there were no corrections in 2017. And then we had that correction we just looked at. And it looks like we formed a W-shaped bottom. Now, we could break the 200-day average, which is currently at around 26.17, and still be within the confines of a W. It would be much more extended. But here's the key point, and I'd like to put pullbacks in perspective, because once you digest what's on this chart and the next chart, you really have all you need to understand what's going on in the market. So since 1945, 75 declines of 5 to 10%. We call that a pullback. They average 6%. They're usually over in a month. That's what we saw with V-shaped bottoms. That was a weekly chart. And they recovered to new highs within a month. What we're experiencing now is what we call a correction. As I said, this is the 29th correction since 1945. They usually happen about once every two and a half years. We've had a more of a concentration here because markets have become more volatile, as we know. But here are the ground rules. Corrections typically average 13.5%. That's exactly where we have been. They last four months. We're now into the fourth month since the January 26th peak. And the good news is they recovered a new highs within three months. So earnings season is late in the game. Clearly, stocks have experienced a sell the news mentality, even with good earnings. Bad earnings have been punished. I think, and I think uh, Dan may agree with me, that we're not going to break out to new highs until earnings season is over. It's that period between mid-May and mid-July when earnings season picks up again, second quarter earnings season. I think we're going to see that break out to new highs. The other takeaway from this chart is there have been only 11 bear markets in 72 years. Once 
every four to six years. Well, that tells me that you want to look for swing trading opportunities and not be looking for the next bear market around the corner because you're going to miss so many opportunities. So what's the most likely scenario for 2018? This chart courtesy of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Higher interest rates, the Fed has already told us that, no surprise there, and rising earnings. Now, the market's been a bit spooked by the 3% level on the 10-year Treasury. Big mistake, in my view. Higher interest rates, when the economy is growing nicely as it is now, are actually bullish. The reason is they reflect stronger loan demand as businesses are expanding, accumulating inventory, and they reflect a strong economy. It's exactly what you want. So why are you going to be afraid of exactly what you want? Well, the market's always looking for an excuse. So higher rates, rising earnings, second quarter earnings are estimated to grow at 19 to 20%, and revenues are exceeding estimates and company guidance is strong. So we've been referring to this as an earnings-driven bull market since late 2016. And in that scenario, you're looking for buying opportunities with one caveat that there's always a bear market somewhere. And Dan Russo has done a great job of finding short sales, even as we think the trend is up. So let's say that you have a totally different view from our bullish view, and you think that the market is at a minimum going to test the lows at 15, uh, 2640 I'm sorry, 2540 on the S&P. Well, there's a really well-defined limited risk way to use put options on the SPY to profit from a test of the lows or protect your portfolio. We love bearish put spreads and bullish call spreads as opposed to buying the put option outright. So what this trade from our options play module, which is embedded in Chaken Analytics, is doing is telling you to buy the SPY put with a strike price of 266.50, which was slightly in the money this morning, and to reduce your cost from $528, which is what that put that expires on June 22nd would cost, by almost $200, you sell the June 254 put against it. What happens if the S&P drops from 2665 to 2540? That's a drop of about 4.5%. You make 273% on your money. Much better odds and probabilities than buying the put outright. So that's an example of profiting from a test of the lows. If you got 260000 in your 401k plan, you're a little skittish. You're thinking of maybe liquidating some stocks or ETFs. You buy 10 of these spreads for $3,335. You've got free reign for the next six weeks. So if we do break out to the upside before July earnings season, you're fully participating. You're paying an insurance policy of 1.5% to protect yourself on the downside. So a lot of things you can do with options in addition to using them for swing trading. Now, in this webinar, we're going to help you identify stocks like Centene. Centene is the premier Medicare provider in America. They found a way to navigate through all the murky waters of the government defunding Medicaid. And we're going to try and help you find entry points like this to take advantage of volatility. This is one of our relative strength buy signals. We're going to explain what this is in a minute. But this was a trade that we identified in Centene on a webinar back in late March. The stock rallied from about 104 all the way to 115. In the upper left, we also illustrate a new capability in Chaken Analytics, the ability to tag a note, paste a note on a chart. Really important when you're trading to keep a diary. Some people don't like doing that. For that reason, we've created this notes take capability I noted that CNC was a rumor takeover candidate. I was watching it in my list along with Humana. And then when it was selling off with the market, I identified a buying opportunity with this relative strength buy signal. The webinar is going to be about showing you how you can find 
stocks like this using a combination of fundamentals, technicals, and discipline exits and entries. So what's the biggest problem we all face as traders? Too much information. We're going to show you how we solve the information overload problem with Chaikin Analytics, where we combine fundamentals and technicals to give you the complete picture without having to go to a million different sources on the web. And because this is such an effective way to look at the market and find ideas, people like Barry Burns, Top Dog Trading, Jim Cramer, and a lot of financial publications have given us shout outs. Some of our old clients from our institutional brokerage firm like Fidelity and Paulson Hedge Fund and Soros are also using the product. So when Barry said that institutions are using it, we really started the company for individual traders like yourself and investors after the financial collapse of 08, because everybody was distraught back then. So how does the power gauge improve your swing trading? It gives you a directional edge. Now, when I ran the options department at Tucker Anthony, 95% of options traders lose money. And the reason is they didn't understand the value and the importance of a directional edge. Back then it was all technical, talking the early 1980s. Now it's a combination of fundamentals and technicals synthesized into this quantitative model of Chaikin Power Gauge and then buy and sell signals for better entries and exits. You may have your own favorites, candlestick patterns, crossing moving averages. We've got signals that are filtered by either relative strength of the power gauge, so they give you an edge. And that's another way Chaikin helps improve your swing trading. So at the heart of all this, Chaikin Power Gauge. Dan, did you want to jump in here for a sec? I No, I'm all set. Oh, feel free. Okay. I'm going to give you an open mic here. Perfect. So check in power gauge, simple display, powerful number crunching going on under the surface. I like to say that the shaken power gauge ratings like a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine under the hood. I've actually never driven a Ferrari. I just assume it's pretty fast because they I got to do it once. It was fun. Was it? Yes. You're you're into cars, aren't you? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I'm driving my 14-year-old Jeep, which did very well in the snow as in Connecticut before we moved to Philadelphia. But uh, Ferrari engine is an apt uh, sort of metaphor for what the power gauge does. It's really crunching a lot of numbers, generates a lot of data, and it's all synthesized into the power gauge. And it can be your GPS during earnings season. We're going to see three or four trades uh, that we identified ahead of earnings. One of them just matured today as a great short sale that we covered. Uh, Dan covered it in his weekly letter, a bearish letter that we put out. So, Chaikin Power Gauge, Jim Cramer gave us the great shout out. Chaikin Analytics model is the best. I use it at my old hedge fund. Did this for a live teaching that Jim Cramer did in late October in New York. This is a paid teach-in. When I got to this slide, which is the next slide you're going to see, Jim gave us this nice shout-out on Twitter. And very pleased that he's using not just Chaikin Money Flow on Off the Charts, but the Chaikin Power Gauge. Last Tuesday, he featured three stocks. We're going to cover two of them in the webinar using the Chaikin Power Gauge as the guide to what you want to own on weakness in this market. So what is the Chaikin Power Gauge? Well, it's four primary factors that look at value, growth, technical, and sentiment indicators. And within each, there's five sub-factors. Value is 35% of the model. Growth reflects company earnings and earnings trends. And believe it or not, earnings consistency is really important. You'd think you're looking for the fastest growing stocks. There's no dividend factors in here, which is really an important contribution to long-term returns. The way we monitor companies that are likely to raise the dividend is earnings consistency. Companies like Johnson & Johnson and Merck that are increasing earnings year in and year out are more likely to raise the dividend. And then we have sentiment factors, which are our secret sauce. Don't normally show up in quantitative models, Short interest, very smart, 
people survive in bull markets by going short. Insider activity, industry group relative strength, really important. We're going to show you how the best trades come when you have the industry group at your back, either on the long or the short side. And then we boxed earnings surprise. Earnings surprise, a really powerful concept. One of my mentors, George Douglas at Drexel Burnham in the mid 80s, did the original work on earnings surprise and earnings estimate revision. So he taught me two things. When companies report a positive earnings surprise, they tend to do it over and over again. Same on the downside. They come in bunches. And more importantly, they cause Wall Street analysts to raise or lower their estimates. And to this day, in spite of high frequency trading and all the articles you read that Wall Street analysts are no longer relevant, analysts at Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Credit Suisse, Merrill Lynch, do influence institutional investors. Dan can share a little of that with you. And in fact, Dan. Um, yeah, you know what, Mark? I was just going to say one of the one of the most common phone calls that I would get intra quarter from clients, you know, guys at hedge funds and mutual funds, uh, would happen when one of my analysts would adjust their earnings estimates intra quarter. A lot of times, analysts only change their estimates, you know, right after the company reports earnings, but. If there was an intra-quarter adjustment and that kind of gets to revisions, I would get a phone call. Why, you know, why is he or she doing that? Why is, why, is, why is Joe taking up their earnings on XYZ? It's, institutional investors are still very focused there. And I think that's really important. And, and the bottom line is that this model works. It's worked since um, September of 2010 when everything was locked down. So nothing has changed. The factors are the same. The weights are the same. As you'll see, there are now two exchange traded funds with over 800 million in assets, just less than a year old. Very proud of that, that are based on a sort of rules-based methodology that uses the power gauge. But the bottom line is this model works because it's based on how Wall Street works. I picked up a, couple, a copy of Investment Management Magazine, which is the Bible of the investment advisors and brokers. And I saw a full page ad for exchange traded funds from John Hancock, really powerful insurance company with investable products. And the big headline was based on 20 years of successful academic research. I, I, I just sort of did a double take because what we've been saying on these webinars is that what you really want is a reality-based model. It's based on how Wall Street works. And that's why the power gauge works year in and year out for the last eight years because it's based on how Wall Street works. This is what successful institutional investors look at every day when they make decisions. Now, the key is they don't all look at the same factors. They have different styles and different time horizons. And the power gauge rating is what I call eclectic. It finds a lot of ways to like or not like a stock. It can like a growth stock. It can like a value stock. And that's the real inherent beauty of the power gauge. Finds a lot of ways to identify profitable ideas. Dan, I wanted to ask you, you, you basically sold the research uh, to institutions of a whole stable of analysts. Since you've been a Chaikin, how does the sort of power gauge compare to a, a big group of 15 or 20 analysts? Well, number one, it distills everything and, and puts it in one spot. So rather than having to have 15 conversations in the morning before I start talking to my clients, I can get everything all in one place, right? That kind of gets to the flood of information that you referenced earlier. And number two, and more importantly to me is because the Chaikin model is quantitatively based. Uh, there's no inherent emotion or bias in there. I think one of the things that would frustrate me the most in my former role was just the lack of sell ratings or negative calls that an analyst was willing to make. And as somebody whose clientele was predominantly hedge funds, you know, investors who could just as easily go short as they could go long. Uh, I was always looking for a really good short idea. And if you just, I mean, just go through street research, there are very few. I think there's probably less than 5% of covered companies have sell ratings. And there are a lot of different reasons for that. And, you know, analysts tend to be biased to the long side. But um, the fact that it's quantitative and the fact that it gives me all the information I need in one spot has been hugely helpful.
Uh, that's a really good insight. Thank you. Uh, and we, we'll see that on the next slide in, in living color. So here's the performance of power gauge life to date from January 99 through the end of last year. Average very bullish stock in the Russell 3000 up 20%. Average very bearish stock even after a nine-year bull market up only 1%. So we try and capture that spread every day by finding very bullish stocks to swing trade on the long side, very bearish stocks to swing trade on the short side. But in 2015, here's Dan's uh, plaintiff cry for short sale recommendations or sell recommendations. Very bearish stocks in 2015 were down over 17%. The reason is there was a bear market in small cap stocks and energy stocks in 2015. And these were the stocks you had to avoid play good defense and get out of the Kinder Morgans and the range resources before they chew you up, but also do what we call turning lemons into lemonade. Use these stocks to swing trade on the short side. One final proof point, and then we're going to get into the meat of all the examples on how you can do this yourself. As I mentioned, two exchange traded funds based on three NASDAQ shaken indices that we created four years ago, April 1st of 14. These are buy and hold portfolios, large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever. All three have outperformed their benchmarks. They're rebalanced on April 1st every year. Then the portfolio sits in place. And last year in February, New York Life Insurance, largest mutual insurance company in America's index IQ ETF subsidiary licensed them, rolled out the NASDAQ chicken or the, the IQ chicken small cap, that's got about 470 million and the large cap was rolled out in December, already has over 330 million. And because of that, we rang the opening bell on NASDAQ. Very exciting to cap uh, a one year effort in conjunction with NASDAQ and New York Life Insurance. And uh, you see at the bottom of the screen, Chicken Power Gauge rating was in Times Square. I actually saw a movie, I guess it was a uh, some sort of terrorist movie and there was some bomb threat in Times Square in the movie. And so they had the NASDAQ tower with the swinging, rotating uh, graphics. And there we were. So why do I focus on validation? Because you're committing an hour of your time. And I want you to believe heading into the examples that we're now going to dive into that the Chaken power gauge can make a difference in your trading. So successful tra trading demands a disciplined methodology. This pyramid basically encapsulates this. Doesn't have to be complex. This is really a three or a five step methodology. At the top of the pyramid, the power gauge rating, because we think fundamentals are the key, and industry group relative strength or weakness. The bottom of the pyramid, just two technical indicators, check in money flow, which you're all familiar with, and check in relative strength. Sweet spot is in the center. You make money swing trading with good exits and entries. So it's as simple as this, and we've distilled that pyramid down to two patterns. The classic shake and bull is what we want to use for long trades, swing trades. You want to put these stocks into your 401k plan. Shake and power gauge rating is bullish, meaning the fundamentals are strong. Stock is outperforming the market, and shake and money flow is strong, telling you the institutions are accumulating the stock. So here's E-Trade our poster child for a classic check and bull. We read the chart from the bottom up. That's another distinguishing characteristic of check. And not only do we combine fundamentals with technicals, we encourage you to look at the fundamentals first. And that's the ribbon at the bottom of the chart. Check and power gauge goes from red to yellow to green. It's been uniformly green for each trade going back to June. So the fundamentals were strong for E-Trade for the last 10 months, 11 months. Right above that is our proprietary relative strength indicator. We've taken the numbers you see in Investor's Business Daily from 1 to 99. They're, they've got a good relative strength indicator. We converted it into a stochastic of relative strength. If you're a technician, you'll understand what that means. If you're not, it just smooths things out. And look how E-Trade, even with all the dips and the pullbacks, has been outperforming the market since July. When the market agrees with the model, in other words, when a stock with a bullish fundamental rating is outperforming, 
you get price acceleration. Because no matter how good your fundamental research is, if the market doesn't agree with you, guess who wins? As my old friend Marty Zweig used to say, Mr. Market always wins. So you want a stock that's got bullish fundamentals that's outperforming the market. Then we look at check and money flow to see if the institutions are buying. And when check and money flow stays green for three or four months, when it achieves these big peaks, it's telling you there's institutional accumulation. So you want to look for the buy signals. In this case, this is our money flow buy. As you'll see, six pairs of buy and sell signals in Chaken, whether you're a guest or a member, you can go on our website, chakenanalytics.com, and see the basis for the six signals. The key is they're either filtered by relative strength or money flow. So they're supported by either market action or fundamentals. In this case, the money flow buy is pretty simple. A stock with bullish money flow gets oversold and then moves back above an eight period exponential average. Really simple. Bullish fundamentals, gets oversold, then reverses back to the upside. These signals are accurate about two out of three times. They're great for swing trading because they tend to last five to 10 trading sessions when you get back to the upper volatility band. So this chart really encapsulates everything you need to know to trade successfully. At the top of the chart, we show you a summation of the trend and tell you whether the industry group is strong or weak. We show you when the next earnings report is. And we color code earnings reports to reflect whether a company had a positive earnings surprise or a negative earnings surprise. Because as I said, they repeat over and over again. And you can see the price action around the earnings report. Very often, a stock will spike on a good earnings report, even in a season like this, where there's been a lot of sell on the news had a chance with E-Trade after the earnings report, if you bought on that buy signal at around 55 and a half, to sell out at 60 and a half on the opening when it spiked up after a positive report consolidated, and now it's moved back up and made a new high. That tells you how strong E-Trade is, because a lot of stocks that have reported positive earnings have not gone back and made new highs. N nice to know that there's a great pattern out there, but how do you find them? Well. For members of Chaken Analytics, they have access to our screening program. And there are a lot of good screeners on the web. Finviz has a great screener. What's different about Chaken is that we let you screen on the quantitative model. I'm sorry, I've got an Apple mouse that's very sensitive. We also let you screen on the individual 20 factors. Choose your starting universe, technicals, fundamentals, price trends. What I did here for a webinar I did about a month ago was I used the S&P 500 because I'm looking uh, in volatile climate for large cap stocks. And I screened on one of the factors in the model after I said, I only want to look at bullish stocks for buying candidates. I want free cash flow to be strong. Jim Cramer has been talking about this. Obviously, Warren Buffett focuses on it. Strongest companies with bullish ratings above a long-term trend and with strong relative strength. And I filtered the S&P 500 down to only 16 names. Remember, this is a month ago. E-Trade at 56 on the way to 62. Marathon Petroleum, 73 on the way to 83. Humana had a big move. Michael Coors went to 72. A lot of really potentially great buy candidates. And this is how easy it is to narrow the universe down. You narrow the universe down, you're going to be focused. Focus is the key to making money trading. Now let's look at the classic bears. Just turn everything I've said on its head. Power gauge rating is bearish. That means the fundamentals are not good. Underperforming the market, shake and money flow is red, not green. We've been using to sorrow a drug and biotech stock which started out with a $12 billion market cap a year ago when it was trading at 160, now has about a $5 billion market cap. Why? Because it's dropped by almost two thirds in a bull market. It's dropped from 160 below 50, trading at 46 today. Sell signals along the way, but read the chart from the bottom up. Power gauge is bullish. Stock is underperforming the market. Institutions are selling, so you want to be selling along with them. 
This is what we call a classic shake and bear. Analysts are lowering their estimates. How do we know that? Right on top. After their recent earnings report, analysts are now lowering their estimates. Industry is weak. Everything is in your favor on the short side. So I'd like to zero in on three profitable patterns. One we call a dynamic duo, personality changes, and stealth accumulation and distribution. That's that unique way to use check and money flow that we've been teaching institutional investors for over 30 years. So what is the dynamic duo? It's a combination of fundamentals and technicals. That's what this webinar is all about. Check and power gauge rating to summarize the fundamental potential and check and relative strength to tell you whether the market agrees. So this is the way to find big winners and losers with one exception. And we're going to see an example of that later on. Relative strength stands alone as a bullish or bearish indicator. You know, what do we mean by that? You've all traded momentum stocks. Typically, a momentum stock is a stock with great price action where the fundamentals may not support it. So you're on a high wire without a safety net. You've got to use stops. You've got to know what you're doing. But relative strength can identify uh, both the up and the downside really good trading candidates. So be aware of that. Now, the second point is that stocks change character. Just as analysts put their feet in cement, which I'm sure frustrated Dan when he was selling their research. On a daily basis. Yeah, and always, always um, combining it with, with technicals, which is what made Dan so uh, attractive for us when um, we started talking to him. So we call it spotting personality changes. Stock goes from outperforming the market to underperforming the market. That's a bearish personality change. The reverse is a bullish personality change. And Dan, why don't you analyze this chart of Michael Coors, which by the way, is in, it was in the very strong apparel group. So there's the industry group, wind at your back coming into play. So yeah, no, obviously something that I look at is, you know, the strength of industry groups and strength of the market in general, kind of take a top down approach. We want to buy the best stocks in the best, best parts of the market. So you can kind of see the personality change that Mark was talking about at the bottom of the screen. You know, stock went from underperforming relative to the SPY to gapping higher following, uh, following a, uh, a positive earnings surprise. And then it, it never really looked back, right? The, the relative performance was strong the whole way. You know, after the initial gap, stock consolidated, became oversold based on our proprietary overbought, oversold indicator. It triggered an oversold buy signal. And that was your opportunity to, to enter the trade on the long side after earnings. So we're not talking about trying to, you know, roll the dice and get in front of an earnings print. You, had, you already had the information, stock pulled back, signal triggered, money flow was positive, signaling that the institutions were accumulating the stock. And, you know, you could have gotten into the stock in the, in the low 40s and, and wrote, it up to, wrote it up to close to 70. All the okay. while, the stock was outperforming. Dan, what's been your experience with buying gaps? Do, do, have you ever made money doing that consistently? Uh, no, actually. And I grade level three of the CMT exam. <laughs> and the, the question that I had to grade uh, this past weekend was all about a strategy of buying or selling gaps and whether or not it was successful. And the statistical evidence is if you buy that gap in the short term, you're likely to lose money. So this is why the system is so powerful. You, you know what you want to buy, right? The, the, the power gauge turns bullish, and then you know when to buy it. That's the technical side, when you, when you get your signal and the stock becomes oversold. So let's take a look at a bearish personality change. And again, this is in the very weak REIT group. You know, you can see the same. It's basically the same situation, just in reverse. Last July, you know, shifts from outperforming the market to underperforming the market. Stock breaks below its long-term trend line. And then somewhere in kind of the September time frame, the stock gets, you know, becomes over overbought based on our, our oscillator. And you get a, a money flow sell signal. And you can see that institutions were, were dumping the stock, even as it was, it was kind of moving sideways. And that was the, the kind of the stealth that Mark had referenced earlier. And he'll get to that a little bit later in the presentation. And what's interesting to me is that, you know, even as the stock was trying to rally, it never really made it back last September towards the uh, towards the upper volatility band. So 
institutions selling stock really can't get to the upper end of the range does become overbought on a short term basis while it's underperforming the market. That was, that was your trigger to, to get in on the short side. Yeah. These are your great short sale opportunities and um, they, they come in multiple waves. So there's never just one opportunity. You, you take your profit at the lower volatility band, cover the short, you know, get out of the bearish put spread. So here's the signal that I think is unique to this webinar. And I, seen shake and money flow documented in 50 different ways, but never the, what we call the uh, secret sell signal that 95% of traders don't see. It's called the bearish shake and money flow sell alert. And here it is in a chart of advanced auto parts that ends, um, I guess, last fall or last spring. Um, bearish money flow sell alert happens when a stock makes or equals its old high near the upper volatility band and shaken money flow instead of going green as it should and normally does stays red. That tells us that smart money is getting out of the stock. This is advanced auto parts at 170 in January of 17. All three of the big auto parts stocks, O'Reilly and AutoZone were weak. It was the first alert that something was wrong with auto part stocks. Now the relative strength was strong. This, this is a case of a momentum stock where the fundamentals didn't support it. And look what happens when things change, when the institutions just bury the stock, breaks below long-term support. And then ahead of a couple of earnings reports, we had sell signals. This is our relative strength sell. I wanna take a minute on this. This is the most powerful swing trading signal we have. <clears throat> It happens when a stock is underperforming the market, rallies up, gets overbought, and then drops back below its 21-day average. That constitutes a relative strength sell signal. The reason this is so powerful for swing traders, these signals last four to eight weeks. So you can give yourself some time if you're buying options. You can buy 20 or 30 delta options or 70 delta options if you understand what that is. If not, when you become a member of Chaken Analytics, Josh Minlin, who's organized tonight's webinar, gives biweekly options forums just for our members. But just be aware that a signal that has 70% accuracy four to eight weeks out is your friend if you're an options trader. And if you're a swing trader, in this case, to the short side. Now, this chart ends with the stock trading at around 95 the low is actually 78 on the stock. So plenty of downside, bearish money flow sell alert up at 170, some sell signals in the 140, 50 area, and it just kept going lower all through 2017. Now, here's another example of a stock which started out strong. I made it a buy recommendation, my bullish stock of the week in September in my weekly market insights. D.R. Horton, home builder, 3690, caters to first time home buyers. So again, we're gonna read the chart from the bottom up. Power gauge was bullish, what does that mean? Fundamentals are positive. Then we look to the next slice up, outperforming the market. Finally, check and money flow shows us the institutions are accumulating the stock. We had these oversold buy signals, which are new eight day lows in a stock with a bullish power gauge. I owe that to Larry Williams, who was also a sort of mentor on money flow creation. And then when it pulled back to the 21 day average in September, I said, time to recommend this. Institutions are major buyers. And the stock went almost straight up from 36.90 to 53 and money flow was strong all the way up. Then look what happened when it made its final thrust to a new high at 52 and change, apologies, at the upper volatility band, money flow stayed negative. What did that tell us? It told us smart money was getting out of DR Horton and you wanna get out with them. It's one of the only signals I know that can enable you to get out at or near an all time high or a trading peak with the confidence that you're not leaving a lot of money on the table. Another thing it does, it tells you to ignore the next buy signal. 
in this case, these oversold buys like money flow work about two out of three times. They tend to be a five to 10 day trading signal. And interestingly, Barron's on the way down recommended DR Horton and the other home builders at about 48 on the way down from 53. And for whatever reason, these stocks have gone nowhere. Relative strength has gone from green to red. That's your bearish personality change. You don't want to keep your feet in cement because that's when you miss read the market. So before I hand the next slide over to Dan, Dan, what was your experience on the floor when smart money was coming in? How, how does that happen that your stock can make a new high and money flow can stay negative? I mean, you know, just as you said, you know, the, the smart money is kind of slowly but surely selling, you know, selling their positions, taking equity exposure down. Um, when I was on the floor, I was a market maker. So unfortunately, it was my obligation to actually be taking the other side of those trades. Uh, you know, my job as a specialist was to buy when there were no buyers and sell when there were no sellers. And, you know, so I, I was often on the other side of that trade uh, out of obligation. But more often than not, you know, you would see it at the end of the day. Well, so what's interesting is there's a mini version of that pattern, and Dan's going to get into this in the next slide, because Trimble Electronics is a stock that he recommended back in March as a short sale. And I piggybacked on him two weeks ago and made it my bearer stock of the week. And what happened in this stock, Dan? You know, so for me, when I identified it, you know, I kind of went through, you know, followed the process. The stock had a you know, the stock had a, a very bullish, a very bearish rather power gauge rating. I noticed that it was in a downtrend and, you know, on rallies, it could never really get to the upper volatility band and money flow maintained, uh, you know, a, bear, a, a bearish posture. So I kind of had this on a, on a watch list for a, for a short sale idea. And when it became, when it became overbought and triggered a, a money flow sell signal, I, I highlighted it to uh, to our members as a as a potential as a potential short sale that was around thirty seven dollars five six weeks ago, and we covered the trade this morning uh, on the gap down on earnings around thirty two dollars. So, uh, but that one was a win. Really nice trade, and the mini version of the money flow sell alert occurs when you get overbought. In this case, you didn't get anywhere near making new highs or the upper volatility band. But even on that rally from 36 to 39. Money flow stays bearish. Yeah, I mean, this, this is like a tip-off. You can find this on stockcharts.com. It's on every one of your online brokerage platforms. We make it easy because we combine everything on one chart and color code everything so uh, you, your sort of right brain can respond, the creative side of the brain, because the best traders, I think, are people who can look at a chart and know what's going to happen. Now, the rule space entries help, but I've seen traders, people like Dan, who start using Chaken with some experience and become just, a, they can leaf through charts and tell you what's going to happen and know which stocks to zero in on. So Tremble was a big success. And everything we've looked at here is basically what Warren Buffett calls the fat pitch. He's famously said they don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street so you don't have to swing at every pitch. You can wait for your pitch. He calls it the fat pitch. We call it the ideal setup. And what's missing is that sweet spot from that pyramid, check and buy and sell signals. Six pairs of them. We've seen three pairs here, on, uh, overbought buy and sell, money flow buy, and the relative strength signals. Great for swing trading. And again, as with the classic bulls, it's nice to know they exist, how do you find them? Well, in our iPad and desktop app, we have dashboard alerts. From a webinar I did on May, on April 5th, in a list that I follow, got these buy signals. I zeroed in on Marathon Petroleum because the price of crude oil was going up. Could have been Adobe, which had a big run. And let's see what happened to Marathon. It gave a money flow buy at 72.60 on April 4th. I'm going to go back to that slide, and here it was. 72.60, 
went all the way to 83. They announced a takeover, reported earnings, and the stock encountered some profit taking. But those are the kinds of disciplined trades that you can find with the disciplined approach better than trading on your emotions. Now, we introduced a new feature on Monday, yesterday in Chaken Analytics, daily email alerts. So in a list that you're following or any other list in the system, you can see the email alerts without even going into the app. So this morning in a 40 stock list that I follow, a, a company called Envision Healthcare triggered an oversold buy signal and also had reported a positive earnings surprise. So I was alerted to that. You could have bought Envision Health up about 40 cents on the opening, 37.35. It traded as high as 39 today. That's an example of how actionable alerts can lead to great swing trading. You're following a small list of stocks. You see the signal. You know why it happened because of the earnings surprise. You want to be in the stock. So I'd like to turn it over to Dan here uh, because swing trading is the theme of this webinar. And Dan's got four great examples for you. And Dan, why don't you start with this slide? You know, I mean, listen, a lot of my process revolves around, around swing trading, you know, having to put out an idea every day. Uh, you're kind of looking for an opportunity to be right quickly because people tend to forget what you said a month ago, but they're not going to forget what you said a day ago. So this, this environment is really an opportune environment for that. You know, volatility plus fear is opportunity. We just kind of, you know, to defer to Mark and, and the fact that Chicken Analytics is based in Philadelphia, we, we just, we trust the process. We follow the power gauge <laughs> to find the, you know, the best stocks in the strongest industry and sector groups, and then use, you know, a rules-based approach for, for, you know, entering and exiting trades or, you know, opening on the long or short side. And I do have a few examples, you know, every day in my morning insights letter, I have to pick a stock. So, uh, you know, interactive brokers was one that I had on March 26th as a bullish idea, you know, stock had a very bullish power gauge rating and it was the relative performance against the SPY was strong. Money flow was bullish and it had been for most of the previous 12 months. So there are the, you know, my old clients buying the stock, you know, it had pulled back to a rising long-term trend line and it triggered the, uh, the oversold buy signal. So when we put this out as a long idea uh, on March 16th, I, on March 26th, rather, I had a lot of confidence and, you know, the stock is up 16% since that idea was sent out to Chaken Analytics members. And also, this is in the same industry group as E-Trade. So if you zero in on strong industry groups, there are usually two or three leaders in the group. In this case, E-Trade, Interactive Brokers, maybe one or two other names. But these were the real leaders. And so, Dan, pick one of the leaders. That's what I like about it. Uh, and every, every Tuesday in my, in my morning note, the, the theme is an industry in focus. And I drill down on an industry, you know, not just the industry, but, you know, the the individual sectors within that industry too. So we can really get granular. Uh, Valero is another one. It was back on March 8th, bullish idea to take advantage of the strength that I was seeing in oil. So I don't just look at the equity markets. I look at, I look at everything, fixed income, commodities. So, and that's all highlighted in my morning notes. Valero, again, through the process, it had a very bullish power gauge rating and was leading the SPY since last September. Overbought, oversold indicator moved into oversold territory and the stock pulled back to the, to the rising long-term trend line, but money flow remained positive. Um, and, you know, it set up an ideal, and it set up an ideal entry point. Uh, there was a relative strength buy signal the previous week. So we highlighted Valero as a long idea. Oil has continued to move higher and the stock is up 25% since we, uh, since we put that out. And what I love about it, as someone who used to cover hedge funds, is that the process works on the, sh on the short side or the bearish side as well. Uh, I, on April 16th, I highlighted Philip Morris because it was in the very, very weak consumer staples sector. It uh, had a very bearish power gauge rating with the stock at around $101. Been lagging the SPY since last summer. Uh, our indicator moved into overbought overbought territory and money flow was bearish, even though the stock was trying to rally. So that was my tip off, triggered an overbought sell signal, highlighted it to our members. 
Three days later, they reported earnings that disappointed the street, and the, sh- and the stock promptly fell, and it just continues to grind lower. I think this one's down 25% since we highlighted it three weeks ago. Yeah, and uh, Dan, do we have enough money to get Joel Embiid as the spokesperson for Chaikin? If we're going to be highlighting the process, we need we need the real deal. Uh, uh, you, took you him, I took think, him four uh, games to get going, but I think if we if we put on some trades like this, and um, I think we will. Well, I'll, I'll reach out to him. That's the nice <laughs> thing about Philadelphia. You, you see these players uh, you know in town as opposed to New York where they disappear on you so uh, this is another example where the industry group trend really helped and uh, remember I said on that first slide with the power gauge it can be your GPS during earnings season this is what we mean by that and then kind of in the same group the same the same themes as a, as a trend follower I believe that trends you know stay in motion so as we said consumer consumer staples was had been weak, so there was a similar setup in Colgate Palmolive on on April 10th. Power gauge rating very bearish, stock underperforming the broader market. Our overbought, oversold indicator moved into overbought territory, but money flow remained bearish. So um, even though the stock was moving higher, Colgate hits resistance at the long-term trend line, triggers an overbought sell signal, you know, which set up a bearish idea, and you know, promptly. We're, you know, we're 13% to the good if you took the short idea. And I can tell you Dan's not cherry picking because uh, these were just three, four obvious examples. There's, there's just been a consistent flow of good ideas. The key here is to understand his process, to not to overuse that. Uh, we do have one more game with Boston at least tomorrow. And uh, it's if you can learn by looking over the shoulder of a good trader, who's doing it every day, you're going to become a better trader. So I'd uh, like to end the webinar by looking at how you play good defense. Because uh, as I said earlier, turning lemons into lemonade is the way the good defense can lead to good offense. So you play good defense uh, by avoiding the stocks, by knowing what stocks you shouldn't own. Because Herb Greenberg, who writes for street.com and is on CNBC, said three years ago, it's the stocks you don't own that matter. What did he mean by that? Well, he meant you can improve your trading and your portfolio returns by avoiding weak stocks and weak industry groups, by knowing what stocks not to buy. And we're going to see two examples of that. They're going to blow your mind in a minute. Improve performance by eliminating bearish rated stocks from your 401k plan and from your bullish radar screen Spotting personality changes, another way to play good defense. Don't put your feet in cement and fall in love with a stock because the stock won't love you back. And use bearish put spreads on weak stocks to make money on the downside. So here's a poster child for that. Albemarle Chemical Corp in the S&P 500 reports earnings tomorrow night after the close, right ahead of the most Recent earnings report, power gauge was bearish, underperforming the market. You'd had the bearish personality change. What were the institutions doing here? Were they buying or selling the stock? Well, if you've been listening, and I know you have, because we see a lot of questions coming in, institutions were persistent sellers for the last five months. Now, are they going to report another negative earnings surprise? Don't know, because our earnings alert indicator could have been a red exclamation point, it's not. And what that means is analysts are not lowering their estimates. Even though trend is weak and industry is weak, uh, you're not seeing a lot of analyst estimate revisions to the downside. Doesn't mean they won't report a negative earnings surprise. From a short sale point of view, I like the fact that it's rallied from 86 to 100 ahead of the earnings report. That happens a lot. And using a uh, low cost put option, you could probably trade this to the downside. If they do report another negative earnings surprise, the market's been unforgiving. The stock could easily make a new low down around 85. But you want to do it with a put option or a put spread that doesn't risk a lot of money. So now let's have a little fun to end the webinar. Uh, In Jim Cramer's live teaching and then subsequent articles and interviews, I've been quoted as saying bottom fishing is the most expensive sport in America. So we're going to show you why you should say goodbye to bottom fishing. And uh, at the bottom of this chart, I've just cut the fundamentals from a stock that many of you know very well. And this chart ends 
in June of 17. Uh, and you can see the power gauge was bearish. It was underperforming the market for a year. Institutions had been selling the stock. And if you were listening to CNBC, you were probably being encouraged to buy Under Armour. And the stock dropped from 42 all the way down to 18. And when it was in that basing phase, analysts were coming on saying, buy it, it's cheap. They signed a deal with Steph Curry. Well, it turned out to be a $126 million deal. And then Kevin Durant said, nobody wears Under Armour shoes and the stock tanked again. So easily could have been tempted to bottom fish, but everything was still negative. Chicken and Money Flow showed you that there was some bottom fishing going on. Maybe it was short selling. The stock, when we took this chart in June of 2017, was $21. And that was not cheap because the ultimate low in October of 2017 was 11. So if you were bottom fishing in Under Armour in the low 20s, 18 to 28, you had a lot of pain ahead of you. Look what's happened now, though. The stock had a very positive response to an earnings report back here three months ago. And it's now outperforming the market. What do we call that? Bullish personality change. And the relative strength sell signals, which had all worked on the downside, are now actually working on the upside, even though the power gauge is neutral. Remember I said relative strength stands alone as a bullish or bearish indicator. I wouldn't trade these signals, but I wouldn't be shorting the stock anymore. Let's give you one more example. In this case, the power gauge was neutral, but it was underperforming with big institutional selling. And if anybody recognizes this as General Electric, you get the ESP award. General Electric is a stock you wanted to avoid and not bottom fish in all through 2017. Relative strength sell signals, remember they work 70% of the time, four to eight weeks, you can see it on the chart consistently profitable, put trades, swing trades on the short side, string of bearish earnings surprises. And guess what happened a month ago? About two and a half weeks ago, you had a positive earnings surprise. Stock spiked up. Power gauge turned bullish for the first time in two years on General Electric. Jim Cramer noted this on his off the chart segment. Last Tuesday, along with Marathon, gave me credit for the call. And it's not my doing, it's the power gauge. And even this morning, when the market was down uh, about half of 1%, General Electric was up 1.28%. And in his midday market letter, Jim Cramer singled out GE and said, gee, maybe it is in fact making a turnaround. Power gauge says it might be. So you so no it longer does want look to be interesting, at least uh, to yeah. have on a radar screen, right? Yeah, and uh, you know, there's still a lot of bearish analysts out there. So, uh, and probably a lot of. Sh I think the shorts have actually covered here, because money flow is not as bad as it was, and usually that happens when the shorts are covering. So, wouldn't be my first choice, but it's certainly a stock uh, that might be interesting in a retirement plan, and there may be a great trade here. I but actually have it on. A, I have it on a bullish watch list. There you go. And so uh, this is an example of how we find winning trades. So uh, I'm going to end the webinar with the stock I love to hate, Tesla. When I did this this morning, <clears throat> the stock had rallied up to 306 and change. You can only short Tesla on rallies, in my opinion. And we love the relative strength sell signals. The stock actually closed at closer to 300. And we use the options play module to find you a way to play Tesla on the downside. In this case, again, the vertical bearish put spread, buying the 305 put expiring June 22nd, selling the 260 put against it. Now, this has a high probability of success if the stock breaks down to the old lows. Elon Musk is eating up all his uh, goodwill on Wall Street. And he's basically crashed and burned with the earnings call. So for $1,370, you can be short the equivalent of $30,000 worth of 
Tesla, that's your full risk. Contrast that to buying the put outright, which costs you $2,000. If the stock trades down to the lower strike price of 260, you make about 125% on the put, you make 225% on the spread. That's why vertical spreads, put and call spreads are so much better than buying an option outright. They increase your probability. That's why it gets a big 138 circled in green with a check mark. High probability options trades to go along with the probability based power gauge relative strength way to look for opportunity. So one testimonial here, this is pretty extreme. It actually got better. Mario said, I went from 235,000 to a million two in seven months. We got this testimonial last July. Been trading options for many years with not much success on January, Fourth, I found your system. Started the year with 235. Now at a million two, that actually went to three million. Hard to believe. It's absolutely true. Mario took advantage of our one-on-one -on -one coaching. Josh Midland actually trained him in options trading. Never gave him a recommendation. Just showed him how to use Chaken to find uh, trades. Pulled back when text pulled back. I think this account. Josh is up around 4 million at some point. Mario is clearly a, a risk taker. He's doing very, very well. <laughs> and he's just going through the process and using the coaching and the uh, options education that we provide all free for members. Yeah, and all from a platform that won the Benzinga FinTech Award a year ago in May in New York for best ideas platform. You've seen some of the examples of that now. Dan joined us three months ago. He got right on board using Chaikin with his own unique technical methodology, which I'm very much in awe of because uh, he's methodical and he's sharp and he's a great compliment to the, to the system. I'm well, blessed, thank thank blessed you coming from somebody, from somebody who has an indicator named after him. Well, you're doing the heavy lifting by, uh, by doing the work every day. I'm just uh, along for the ride at this point, but all of this, and the examples are from Chaken Analytics, which is a proven stock selection system. It incorporates our 20-factor model to analyze the fundamentals, our stock discovery engine, which is what we won the FinTech award for. You just plug in a symbol of stock you like or hate, and it'll give you similar stocks. Dan does this um, once a week in a new market letter that's going to be launched in mid-May that we'll tell you about on a future webinar. And you've already seen the screener and the options play module, which are additional features. Chaken Analytics normally sells for $2,195 a year. That's an annual subscription. You can go to chakenanalytics.com slash expert. But as a special for the top dog trading community, we'd like to take $200 off the price, $19.95 for a one year subscription chickenanalytics.com slash expert and the offer expires Friday, May 11th, or you can go to sales at chickenanalytics.com or call the number on the screen. Now, one final testimonial in five business days that I've been using Chicken, I paid for the subscription over tenfold. Again, this is another options trader. These initial results are nothing short of outstanding and please extend my thanks to the entire Chicken team. This is really a team effort 26 people in Philadelphia plus Dan in Long Island. You get our intraday charts, earnings alerts, my weekly market insights, the new note capability, the email alerts. We keep adding new functionality to Chaken Analytics to make it more useful to help you generate consistent profits. Plus, as a Chaken member, you get member only access to our weekly strategy webinar with Josh Minlin hosting and Dan Russo, our market strategist. You've already heard how eloquent he is at expressing uh, what you can do with Chaken Analytics on a practical benefit. One-on-one -on -one coaching if you need it. Group support sessions as well every week and Dan's daily morning insights where you get these ideas that we featured in today's webinar. So one final inducement to get you on board as a member of the Chaken Analytics community. If you subscribe by midnight tonight, we'll take an additional $200 off the cost of Chaken Analytics. Uh, Josh is going to uh, click 
<clears throat> and put the uh, the um, link into the uh, chat box and then click through so you see what it actually looks like. So with that, I'd like to thank Barry Burns, who had to leave us early for turning out such a big group. Dan Russo, it's the first time he and I have done this together. You can sure uh, bet that you're going to be hearing more from Dan on future webinars because he just knocked it out of the park tonight. And we'll turn it back to Josh Minlin. Uh, thank you, Mark. Everybody in the chat, box. You can take advantage of our offer. There's a link there that will, do, that will automatically apply the discount. That's chickenanalytics.com slash expert. Or you can give us a call right now at 877-697-6783. We have all kinds of members-only sessions available for you. We can have you on an onboard session tomorrow. You can be in an option ideas session. The next one is done live on Thursday. You can take advantage of all of that and this amazing offer. Again, to take advantage of our offer, use the link in the chat window. The discount code will automatically be applied, or you can give us a call at 877-697-6783. Thank you all for hanging out, and I look forward to seeing you in a future session.